In this video, we're going to talk about vectors in R2 and in R3. Any two-dimensional vector has a unique representation on the Cartesian plane in R2. So for instance, the vector OP is a vector with its tail at the origin and its head at the point P. And there are different ways of expressing such a vector as shown uh, in number one, uh, two, and three. Now we call it the, the we refer to R2 um, because if you look at a y-axis, uh, you can think of that as a real number line. And if you look at an x-axis, you can think of that as a real number line. So if you take a real number line and cross it with a real number line, it kind of makes sense that they refer to it as R2. So that's where that uh, notation comes from. Anyways, in R2, for instance, if we wanted to uh, talk about the vector AB, we would uh, draw a vector from the origin to the point AB. And henceforth, any vector that uh, represents a journey of uh, A units to the right and B units up could also be expressed as uh, the vector AB, regardless of where that vector was. Now, you may wonder, how can we represent uh, three-dimensional vectors on a two-dimensional space? Well, we have something called the right-handed system. So any three-dimensional vector has a unique representation in R3. The most common convention for expressing the x, y, and z axes is the right-handed system of coordinates. Many of you have a textbook where it'll be at the top of page 312. The vector OP is a vector with its tail at the origin and its head at the point P, ABC, and different ways of expressing that vector are OP or ABC or ABC with a uh, vector symbol over it. Now, you might be curious, uh, if you just see ABC, uh, how would you know if it's the point ABC or the vector ABC? And the answer to that is context. Uh, depending on the context of the question, a little bit of logic and common sense, you'll be able to tell if you should be thinking in terms of a point or a vector. So uh, let's uh, try using the right-handed system and sketch the vector OP, uh, where um, we're going from the point O, uh, 0, 0, 0, to the point P, 6, 2, 4. First thing we do is we uh, sketch the framework for the uh, right-handed system, and that's as shown there. We always show the Z, Y, and X axes as indicated. Then uh, to show the uh, vector 6, 2, 4, we're going to end up drawing a rectangular prism. We're going to travel six units up the X axis, two units up the Y axis, and four units up the Z axis. Then we're going to draw a rectangular prism, and at the edge, every edge will be parallel to the opposite um, axis. So this line here will be uh, parallel to the x-axis. This line here will be parallel to the y-axis. This line here will be parallel to the z-axis. Another line parallel to the y-axis. Another line parallel to the z-axis. And also an equal distance, uh, an equal length as the line opposite it. So notice that each of those two lines there, they're of equal length and they're parallel. And once you do a few of these, you end up really getting the hang of it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to draw to the best of our ability uh, a rectangular prism that looks like that. So uh, we've done that on the next slide. And now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a vector which goes from the origin out to that point uh, shown. And um, so when we draw that vector in, we'll have drawn in the vector OP. Now, it's also possible to determine the coordinates of every one of the other points. We've got the point O, which we know to be 0, 0, 0, and we've got the point P, which we know to be the point 6, 2, 4. But we can also figure out the coordinates of all of these other points. For instance, the point A, that is just uh, two units over on the y-axis, but it's zero units up on the x-axis and zero units up on the z-axis. So that point A has the coordinates 0, 2, 0. But for instance, if I was interested in the point uh, D, well, that point is six units up the uh, x-axis and four units up the y or the z-axis, sorry, 
but that doesn't involve uh, any uh, movement up the y-axis. It's just up from the origin, up the x-axis, up the z-axis. So it would actually be uh, have the coordinates 6, 0, 4. So anyways, following that um, uh, process, uh, we can determine the coordinates of each of those points. We see O is 0, 0, 0. A will be 0, 2, 0. Uh, to get to point B, we'll go uh, two units up the Y and four units up the Z. So B will be 0, 2, 4. Uh, to get to the point C, that's simply four units up the uh, Z axis. So that's 0, 0, 4. Uh, the point D is indicated earlier. That's six units up the Y, zero units up the, sorry, six units up the X, zero units up the Y, and four units up the Z. So that'll be 6, 0, 4. E will be 6, 0, 0. F will be 6,2,0, and finally P will be 6,2,4. Now, you might be curious, how can we show uh, vectors if some of the components of the vector are negative? Well, what we do is we just extend those, um, those axes uh, backwards. We don't always extend all the axes backwards. Uh, so, for instance, we don't extend the y-axis backwards a lot of time because... Uh, in that case, the y-axis is po the y component of the vector we want to uh, uh, draw is positive. But if we did have a negative y component, then we would uh, uh, extend the y-axis backwards, as indicated there. But uh, when you uh, do that, uh, you then um, do the same process we did a minute ago. You go two units backwards on the x-axis and one unit. Uh, forward on the y-axis and five units down the z-axis. And then you uh, sketch in the box as we've shown and you draw in your vector uh, as indicated there. And so um, with a little bit of practice, you get used to doing that. And then, of course, we can determine the coordinates of uh, all of the eight uh, points indicating vertices on that rectangular prism. Uh, the point O is the origin, 0, 0, 0. That's by convention. To get to the point A, we just traveled five units down the z-axis. To get to the point B, we traveled one unit up the y-axis and five units down the z-axis. So that's 0, 1, negative 5. To get to the point C, we traveled uh, two units negatively uh, to, through the x-axis and five units negatively through the z-axis. And we can repeat that process with the other ones here. We went uh, negative two units on the x-axis and uh, positive one unit on the y-axis to get to point D. Point E is simply uh, negative two, zero, zero. Uh, point F um, will be simply zero, one, zero. It's a quick little journey that way. And point P, of course, is negative two, one, negative five. Mm -hmm.